Hi, I'm Diane with Sobatique, and today I'm going to take you through the process of making an easy rolled edge kimono from our jersey knit. We actually have two versions of this pattern on our website, and they're both fashion duos. One is for rayon, which is the, the sample that's on our mannequin right here, which is the first one that we did. And the other is for Jersey Knit. And so today's what we're going to do is just focus on how do we measure, how do we lay out the fabric, how do we cut the fabric, and how do we assemble our easy rolled edge kimono jacket. And to be honest with you, the easy is really easy. And um, I want to say something too that don't worry if you don't have a serger because really what we're going to be using uh, to put this together is a serger. And um, but don't worry about that if you don't have one. When we're working with the jersey knit, you can use your stretch stitch on your machine and you can use an overcast stitch if your machine has one or a simple decorative stitch as well. So there's ways to get around um, using a serger if you don't have one, so don't be intimidated by that. You can still go through the process to make a really, really fun kimono and simple kimono jacket, okay? So that's what we're gonna go through today. And on our website, we do, which is sobatique.com, we do have the fashion duos available. And the what we include in our fashion duo is the jersey knit that you get to select from any of them that we have in stock plus the pattern that guides you through the process of measuring yourself and the full assembly process our project kit comes with a yard and three-fourths of the jersey knit and the knit is 72 inches wide so some of you can use a yard some of you will use the entire yard and three-fourths it just depends on your body measurements and what you need to make the jacket okay so first things first what i would like to do is describe the pattern just a little bit because we're going to use it a lot the first step is how to measure yourself and record the measurements in the actual pattern so we want to make sure that we get everything recorded properly to make it easy to cut out and to assemble okay so open up your pattern and find the page with the insert and the insert itself looks like this and i'm going to get a little bit closer but the insert guides you through what you're going to measure, how you're going to measure it. I actually added a column in here for my measurements when I made my jacket and the space for you to record your measurements. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is decide on the length that you'd like your kimono jacket to be. I'm actually going to use this mannequin to try to show you the different measurements um, and, and it'll help you kind of decide how long you want yours to be and how full you want yours to be. I'm going to get my tape measure and a pen. So I'm going to, the first thing is the length. I'm going to turn the mannequin around. The length measurement is from your shoulder down to the bottom of the hem. And when I made this first one out of rayon, this measures 28 inches. So let's put down 28 inches because I really like that length. And I believe the 28 inches took us down just below um, the widest portion on your behind. Um, so 28 inches and for my version of the knit version that I did I used I 30 inches I wanted it to be just a little bit longer so mine was 30 inches but that all then determines how much fabric you need as well to cut from your jersey knit the next measurement that we need to take is the drop shoulder and what that is this is all leading up to how much 
the back of your garment what the measurement will be for that but on a traditional kimono the sleeve is attached down along the arm it's not sitting right at the shoulder seam up here so what we're going to do is we're going to measure from the top of your shoulder down to where you would like your sleeve to start so on yourself put it right at your shoulder and make sure that the measurements are out on you here and just kind of gauge how far that happens to be and it's going to range probably anywhere from six to eight inches and that is what i have on mine which is seven inches okay we're, we're going to record that the next thing that we want to record is the full back measurement i'm going to show you what that is on the mannequin and then i'll show you how to measure it on yourself it is from one sleeve drop, where you would like that to be, going across your shoulder and down to the other sleeve drop, okay? And on here, that measures 30 inches. When you're, if you're by yourself and nobody to assist you to measure, take your tape measure right there and actually measure from your shoulder. I don't know what I'm thinking here. Measure from your shoulder because you already know that the other drop was seven inches and go across and down. So that's gonna be 23 inches plus seven is 30. So that's 30 inches. And that's what I me measured up here too on the mannequin. One thing to know that when you're making your back panel it also is the amount of fabric that you need to go halfway around you. So we want you to feel comfortable that there's enough drapiness down below, down along your midsection down here. So you may be smaller on your shoulder and wider at your hips. You might be wider at your shoulder and narrower at your hips. So you can adjust this to be the style that you would like. It does not need to be square like it looks here and that like it looks in the pattern itself so you can angle it you can taper it do whatever fits for your body style okay but the 30 inches then if we want to take it down lower around your hips so it's going to give you that fullness around your hip area okay and i think that looks really really great on this garment Next, we need to measure your neck. We need to know, if you see right here, the opening on the garment is across the back of the neck. And the front pieces are attached here and on that side. So this is what we're going to measure now is the opening of the back neck. And that measurement on this garment is five inches okay if you're measuring it on yourself take the tape measure and put it behind your neck and feel comfortable measuring to either side of your neck and then read the number that comes here this one here says nine inches so I can record nine inches and that will be what I want to have behind my neck The last time I did this, it was seven, but nine inches. Okay, the next measurement that we're going to do is actually a calculation. We want to make the two front panels, okay? That's what we need to focus on now. So, the way to calculate the front panels is the width of the back panel from the drop of the shoulder minus what your neck measurement was will be the two front panels okay so we're going to take the 30 inches that i measured for my back we're going to subtract 
the nine inches that I had on my neck and I ended up with 21 inches, okay? So that's the remaining number, but I need two front panels. So I need a left and a right. So I need to take that 21 and divide it by two. So I'm gonna get 10 and a half, round up or round down if you think you may have added too much there. I'm gonna make mine 10 inches. So each of the front panels are going to be 10 inches, okay? The last measurement that we need is your sleeve. We want to know how, how far down your arm, if you can see I'm also wearing a different style kimono today, but how far down your arm you want your kimono sleeve to stop, okay? When do we want it to go to? And that becomes the piece that is added to your sleeve or your, your front and back of your garment, that is your sleeve. Um, so measure, I'm gonna measure what we did here, but this measurement here is 10 inches, okay? Just think about taking your tape measure from your shoulder and letting it drop, holding it with your hand so that you can turn around and see where you are and then kind of judge in the middle of your forearm, okay? This here says 15 inches. So if we had six or seven inches up here, we only need nine or 10 inches down here to have a kimono sleeve that lands just short of our wrist. And remember, these are full. These kimono sleeves are full. So if you want excess fabric there, um, keep it higher or lower, but that's what we're measuring is we're measuring that last piece, which is called the sleeve, okay, that we're going to add to your garment. And I'm going to put 10 inches here. So now we have all of the calculations that we need to make this kimono. We'll go back to the pattern. And on the first page of the pattern, is a little summary sheet. That's where we're going to put each one of those measurements right in the front. So our length is 28 inches. The back panel width is 30. The front panel width is 10 inches. And the sleeve length is 10, did I say 10? 10 inches. Now we need to account for a seam allowance. Most patterns that are paper or tissue come with the, either your quarter inch seam allowance already built into that paper pattern. Um, we need to add a little bit more because this is just, we just measured your finished sizes. So we're gonna add one inch to every one of those pieces, okay? And this guides you through that. So the back panel width is 30. We're gonna add an inch to it, so it's 31. We're gonna cut a piece 31 by the length of your garment, which is 28 inches. The front panels, they're 10 inches each, plus an inch, so we have 11 inches by the length of your garment, which is 28 inches. And then we're gonna cut two sleeve pieces. And the sleeves are 10 inches plus one inch for seam allowance. So those are gonna each be 11 inches by and this is the one that we just put the measurement right in here. For the fullness of the sleeve, we estimated that most of the time when I've made these, they're 30 inches around, around, okay? So if you don't want it as full, make it smaller than 30 inches. But this garment here, that's 30 inches. And it is quite full, but that's the kimono style. But it's completely up to you, okay? So by 30 inches of fullness is what we have in our diagram. So now we are ready to lay out our fabric and cut it out, okay? I'm gonna set that aside. Before we do any marking on the fabric, I'm gonna set this aside as well for just one moment. 
it's very important when it comes to working with Jersey Knit to make sure that you are positioning your pattern pieces straight on grain. Our Jersey Knit has a one-way stretch and we want to keep that one-way stretch going around you. We don't want the fabric to sag when it's on you. We want it to stretch around you. Okay, so this fabric that's laying on my table is the fabric, uh, a Jersey Knit, and it's the Phoenix Lagoon. And I love this fabric. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. But what I want to show you is the stretch. And I've pre-washed this, so you're going to see a lot of curling because it has been washed. And these are the salvage edges right here. Ours have a, and you're, it's going to designate, you'll see what, what we're talking about because there's going to be a stitch line on it. It's pre-stitched. And so that actually will be your easy indicator that that's your salvage. Knits don't really have a salvage because they're, they're woven in a tube and then cut. But we're going to just use that phrase um, because I think it's familiar to all of you. So each one of, um, when you, actually, let me go back. What I wanted to do is show you the stretch. It will stretch, this is why it, it matters what direction you're putting your pattern um, on a knit. It's gonna stretch, we want it to stretch around you and it's not going to stretch this way. So we wanna make sure that we're laying out the pattern pieces on grain with the salvage. The easiest way to make sure that you do have your pattern and your fabric laying straight on grain, I've actually fiddled with this one a little bit to make sure that it is straight before we start laying it out. Um, but the easiest thing that I find to do is I will take one edge of the fabric and I'll lift it up and lift it up until I feel like the fold line has and I can see the grain running straight along the fold. It may do something really wonky to the edges, the selvage edges. It might not be straight. It may look like it's angling or it could be perfectly straight or not. Do not worry about your selvages. Only worry about the fold line and making sure that when you take one of the grains across, just take a moment to do this is go right across and make sure that you can follow that grouping of lines all the way across the fold and then you know that it's ready to put your pattern piece down. When I prepared the fabric for our Jersey Knit version of this easy uh, rolled edge kimono, I folded the fabric as close to half as possible because we're going to use almost the entire width of it. And for the excess fabric that's on my table here, I never let anything drape off of the cutting surface because it could potentially pull and stretch or move. Definitely important when you're working with a rayon. Um, but with the Jersey Knit, it's not that uh, important, but I always pull up the edge to make sure that nothing is hanging off the table. I'm going to grab our measurements one more time and grab my fabric pencil and my ruler and a rotary cutter. And I'm going to put all of the, the uh, using my fabric pencil, put all of the measurements down before we start cutting because we need to double check the layout to make sure that we're using our fabric efficiently. The back panel width that we're going to make is 31. I'm just going to make it 30 just for ease. And so 30, since it's on the fold, we're going to measure in 15 inches. Following your fold is your straight edge and make a mark with your fabric pencil at the top corner and along the edge of your ruler. It doesn't have to be all the way across, just make sure that you can see it, okay? 
And then we're going to move down 28 inches is going to be the length of our garment. So that's 24 plus 4. Make our mark. And again, using the straight edge of the fold, we're going to measure in and mark 15 inches, which is half the width of the back of our kimono jacket. And match up your measurement from the top to this. And again, you're kind of making a perfect square. So use your fabric pencil to do that. I really love working with the fabric pencils from Bowen. And we do have these on our website along with other fabric pencils. But this for some reason seems to be my favorite. The, the, um, what they use for the pencil lead or whatever is just, it's wonderful. And it has a little eraser in case you need that. But we're cutting this off so you won't need to, to worry about that at all. Okay, so now that we have our back, the next piece that we're going to lay down uh, and measure for is the front, the two fronts, because those are the same length as the back. And that will be 11 inches. And remember, this is two ply, so we only have to measure in 11 inches once because we're gonna cut two at a time. So back up here on the top, we'll continue our line because we know what's straight. And we're going to measure 11 inches and I'm going to mark the end and back again so that we know where this ends and I'm going to continue my measurement from down at the bottom of the jacket make my corner and lightly mark the fabric and I do have the right side of my jersey knit up, so I know what it's going to look like there. Okay, and then connect the top and the bottom and make your mark across. Okay. Okay, now. I'm going to pull this forward just a little bit so you can see. Remember, our jersey knit is 72 inches wide. So we're able to get an amazing amount of, of uh, fabric cut with the width of the fabric itself. What I have left, it would be wonderful it were, if it were simply 11 inches because then that would be my sleeve and I would be using less than a yard of fabric to do that. I don't believe it is. I don't think I have another 11 inches. I have less. I have about nine and a half inches. So you can make a decision at this time as to whether or not that will be enough to be your sleeve. So that's a judgment call on your part um, if you'd like to do that or not. And it is okay to cut your sleeve the other direction because that is going around you this way, okay? So that is perfectly fine. I actually am going to do that. I think I'm gonna have a shorter sleeve. Otherwise, what you would do, I'm gonna put this back up on the table. Is we would simply come down past the hem, measure 11 inches down, make a mark, Make another one up here. And one more. And then measure in 30 inches um, because we're making two sleeves at a time and it was 30 inches around the sleeve. This only goes to 24. So we're gonna measure 
we're going to cut, we'll cut it at the fold so that we'll get our two pieces here. So 24 plus 6 is 30. Okay. So you can see where if you get, can use the full width of the fabric, you have more fabric to play with for your next project. There is the 30 inches. Okay, now we are going to cut this out. but I need to move it back on my table. Okay. I'm gonna cut this out and we will be right back. So now we have each one of our pieces cut. We have two sleeve pieces we have two fronts and we have the back piece. What I really strongly suggest right now is to lay this out as if it was the garment itself. So putting all of the pattern pieces in position, it makes it a lot easier for you to follow the instructions and to realize how simple it is to put the kimono together. So what I like to do is take the back pattern or back piece Open it up so that the wrong side is up. The two fronts so that the right side is up as if it were already assembled. And the sleeves, each sleeve will be put on so that the fold is at the shoulder and the seam that joins the sleeve together is underneath. And same with the second sleeve. So we have everything laid out that looks like the actual kimono top. And the first thing that we're going to do for assembly is we're gonna to go to our serger and I am gonna show this on the serger and we're gonna do, we're gonna start stitching with a three thread rolled edge stitch. So please take a look at your serger, make sure that you have the thread in position and run a test. Make sure that you're comfortable with the width of your three thread and um, the stitch length and that it is putting enough of the knit into your rolled edge because this is your seam. So we wanna make sure that if you want it wider, that's fine. If you need the stitches closer together, make your adjustments based off of your serger. Each serger is just a tad bit different. And I have two sergers. I have one in the office and then I also have one at home and they function just a little bit different because they have different features to them. And so I'm gonna be using the one that is in our office here. So I'll be right back. I'm going to get everything situated and I'll take you through the process of surging. It's time to surge. We first have to finish off the short edges of each of the two sleeves. And I'm going to quickly do that now. I take a moment and make sure that I do cut off just a little bit. The knife is engaged and I put the right side of the knit up and we're going to just simply create the, the rolled edge on each one of the ends of the sleeves. to show you what this looks like. So there's the front of the rolled edge 
the hem stitch and there's the back. Very nice. And you can make that narrower or wider. One, one thing also to remember too is um, you're working with a knit. And so we wanna make sure that it doesn't curl or stretch. So adjust your tension to make sure that it continues to stay flat as well. Each fabric knit or woven or whatever is just a little bit different. And so it's good to run some tests on a spare piece of fabric before you start. guided through your serger. Continue doing this on the other sleeve and then also grab the front panels and finish off on the right side now finish off the center where a facing would be normally on a jacket finish that off as well with your rolled hem edge and we'll be right back. I just finished edge stitching each one of the short edges of the sleeves on both of the sleeves and then also the front open end of the kimono. So those are all finished. Next what we need to do is attach the front panels to the back. I'm going to set the front panels aside and flip the back over so that we're working right sides to right sides. Position the front panel where the outside edges, which would be your, your side seams, are touching. And pin or clip along the top. I'm going to clip even with the top here. And here's the second front panel. Because what we're going to do is we're going to attach the front to the back at the shoulders or at the shoulders all in one stitch using the rolled edge stitch. And so I've got these clipped together and as you can see there's a gap in the middle which is the neck. Back over to the serger, I'll be right back. We're going to position the both fabrics now, the front and the back, right underneath the presser foot. So let me get that underneath there. And again, I do cut off just a little bit of the fabric. And I'm gonna remove the clip and we're gonna start surging. that next clip and we're just going to continue past the first front panel into the neck area. Situate my fabric here just a little bit and move it as you go. And I didn't cut my the tail of my thread here because it's going to get positioned right inside that rolled edge and it'll be cut off by this knife that I like to keep going here. And I'm going to remove that 
and guide this under the presser foot as we go. Keep your fingers out of there. And keep everything even. Every now and again, I have to just move it. Because remember, the knit does curl on itself. And the knit will curl to it to the right side of the fabric so you'll always know which side you're working on at any given time cross grain anyway and there we go so now the the two front panels are attached to the back Okay, next, as you can see, now we have a, a, a beautifully finished, let's see if I can bring that up closer. It's just beautifully finished, the edge of the neck. Next, I'm gonna take this, because we're gonna attach our sleeves. I'm gonna open up, and move my pattern out of the way. Open this up so that the right side of my kimono is up, facing up. We're going to attach the sleeve. And I need my marking pencil. Fold your sleeve in half and mark the center of the sleeve on the right side. Just put a little notch. My, my pencil is white. That'll designate the center of your sleeve. We'll match that to the seam that you just made between the front and the back panels. So that will be the top of your sleeve. Clip that in place. And then follow the, down the front of the sleeve and put a couple of clips or pins in there to secure it. and then the other direction as well. So you're going to be adding this sleeve to the back and front panels. And I'll come back and put the other one on. But what we'll be doing is again, we're going to finish our seam from the hem of the back of the garment, encasing the sleeve, to the hem of the front panel. So we're going to just take a and do the whole thing at once. And I'll be right back. Position your fabric underneath the, the presser foot once more. And we are now stitching the sleeve to one side of the front and back panels. So now we're adding the sleeve and you'll see that the fabric does roll, like I said. So now since we have it right sides together, 
the edge of the fabric of the knit is curling towards you. So we just wanna keep it as flat as possible as we go through the serger. Now we're at the shoulder. We have a little bit left to finish adding the sleeve to the front. There we go. And then we'll finish all the way to the hem. Next, add the sleeve to the other side of the garment. We now have both of the sleeves attached to the main body of the kimono. And it looks kind of funny because it looks like there's all these pieces around. But the next and close to final step is to stitch up the side seam through the sleeve. And so we need to pull this up right sides together and now it's really looking like a jacket. Get the clips out of the way and I'm just going to start with one side to show you. Is this side here. I do like to start stitching from the edge of the sleeve down through the connection and towards the hem. Because if I ever have to finish anything I can or change anything, I can always change and correct a hem because we haven't yet finished the hem with the rolled edge. So we can always hide any imperfections down at the hem. So by starting up here, I'm actually going to go, you, you have two options. I have done this both ways. I'm just going to go over to our traditional sewing machine and stitch about a quarter inch away from the edge of the surged finished edge. And then once we get to the center, where everything connects underneath the arm. I get to a point and I pivot. Now the one thing that I really think makes it look a little smoother is if you take a little bit of a curve and then continue down to the hem of your garment. The second option is to go back to your serger if you could take the time to switch it out to a three thread or four thread overlock and you can just simply with your knife engaged prepare a surged edge all the way down to the hem. And so if you don't have your traditional machine set up or near you, just finish it all with your serger as well. 
Now, if you knew you were going to do that ahead of time, you wouldn't have needed to finish off the edges here, but um, it just depends on what you have available from a sewing machine uh, if you have both machines set up. So I'm just going to take and go to the traditional machine and finish off my edges here. I'll be right back. We finished sewing the sleeve closed down to the hem. So now what we have is a jacket, a kimono jacket that has all of its edges finished with a rolled edge and we have one step left. What I always suggest doing, and just to make sure you feel comfortable with the length because you have an, one more step, if you would like to, is to change the hem. You can, you can shorten it if you want. Um, you can lengthen it if you add something to it. But uh, either way, just make sure that you're comfortable with how it's, it fits on you before you do the last edge. And um, I did try this on. So I think what I'll do is just finish with a rolled edge all the way across the hem and come back and show you what it looks like. And um, I'm really thrilled. I think it's going to be great. So one more time to the serger and I'll be back. Well, what do you think? All done. I absolutely love the length turned out wonderful. And the sleeves are the perfect length for me to continue working on things without having any fabric get in my way. And it feels wonderful, cozy, warm, because it's our cotton jersey knit. And as you can see, even though we have the surged edge, the, it rolls, it curls. And um, I just think that adds so much to the garment and it just looks so finished and so nice. So I hope you enjoy making your um, easy rolled edge kimono out of our jersey knit or if you have the rayon version as well, the only difference truly, the only difference with the rayon is that you tear the fabric instead of cutting it. Because we wanna, it's easier with the rayon to simply measure, snip, and tear. And so we'll do a tutorial on that one as well. But in the meantime, enjoy your new kimono and we'll see you later.